Happy New Year, everybody! This isn't the first video I've recorded this year, but it'll probably be the first one I've uploaded to the channel, so happy 2021! This video is like very informal and I just, I think partially I've been avoiding it. Um, didn't really know what to say, didn't really know how I felt. Essentially, I've just been recovering from a lot of life problems, a lot of life challenges. A lot of challenges that I've created myself over the past year, over 2020, essentially being hypomanic for the majority of the year, um, or possibly even just full-blown manic, but I don't think so because I wasn't hospitalized and it didn't, I, I've been there before and it's usually coupled with delusions and dissociations and a, like a lot more um, psychotic symptoms, I guess you could say. I believe that's how you would frame them. Last year's theme for me really revolved around the fact that I was like, okay, I'm young, um, I'm 23 years old, I'm now 24, uh, but it's like, you know, I'm still young or whatever. But my mindset was that I don't need to focus on the future. I don't need to focus on all the adult things that I should be focusing on and like where my career is going and all of these big life goals that I had, you know, previously thought I needed to have figured out, um, I don't need to have figured out. And I, I still don't need to have them figured out. Maybe I should start getting things in order and like, you know, thinking about trajectories. But last year I was just like, screw it. I'm gonna just have the time of my life this year and have some fun, um, which was even multiplied by, you know, the COVID situation. Cause it was like, okay, if we can't do anything. I'm still gonna have the time of my life by doing, you know, what I can do. But having experienced those symptoms of hypomania starting in the summer, that might have, I don't know, changed that theme to being maybe a little bit too literal. I say all that to say I'm dancing around the issue and to say that things are really hard right now in my life. Um, and I wouldn't say hard, like I don't think I'm going to get through them because, well, we have to get through them. But they're challenging and they're testing me. And if I'm being quite honest, I don't really think it's allowed me to feel, if that makes sense. I definitely don't feel hypomanic anymore. Um, and that's partly because I forced myself to start doing the behaviors that keep me from being hypomanic, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, that's going to include getting on maybe some new medications. Um, but for the most part at this time, it's included, you know, just going to bed on time, um, keeping up with the routine, like very strictly eating, the right foods. I'm um, just doing a host of different activities to kind of keep my energy like level. Um, it's still elevated, I believe, more so than normal because I'm back at the stage. And I say back, I don't remember the exact specific time I felt this, but I have felt this in the past where it's almost as though I'm not hypomanic all of the time or at all, but I have these impulses in my mind or these um, thoughts that come across my in my mind and I'm like I should do this and I know that I shouldn't do it and I'm able to tell myself don't do these things but if I had continued down that route it might have led to something else that would have been harder to tell myself not to do I'm not sure if that's just like my subconscious just normally speaking to me and that's how everyone normally deals with these problems and I'm not hypomanic at all. I'm not sure if that's like one of those weird bipolar like you can kind of forecast before you become hypomanic. I'm not sure if that's just how I've compartmentalized it. Um, needless to say though, I do not feel like how I was feeling a month or two ago in terms of just being way more elevated than normal at a consistent rate. That being said though, I have felt more down <laughs> in all honesty um i was in the bed for like the entire week last week i didn't really do anything um couldn't get out the bed couldn't move besides taking like the dog out i had no energy no motivation and this is while my world is falling apart and i still have all of these challenges we're calling them um, I still had all of those. I knew I had to do things to kind of prevent them from becoming bigger challenges or larger challenges. And I'm doing that now. Uh, but there was just no, I just couldn't do anything. And I know depressive episodes don't have to last weeks on end. Mine normally do though. Um, but for that last seven days, yeah, I was just not having it. And it was a weird feeling because 
most times when I've understood depression or when I've been depressed, it's very clear that I do not like life anymore and I do not want life. Like, I don't want life. Um, that's a weird way of saying what I'm trying to say, but y'all get it. And I think that's more of like crisis. Like, no, that's after you've been depressed for so long, that's like a crisis point, but you can be depressed and not necessarily want to end it all. Um, so maybe I was going through a little bit of a depressive episode there. I'm feeling better this week and better in the sense that I'm actually up doing things and like taking care of business sort of or trying to salvage business. But yeah, it's a rough start to 2021. Um, I guess, you know, the hypomania is gone, which is great. We're just fighting the depressive side now. Um, it sucks like crazy because... I literally made a video, like, let's say six months ago where I was saying, saying essentially, I'm enjoying this hypomania. I love my life, but I know that these things are bad because in the winter, I'm probably going to bring about like a depressive episode because of my actions and my actions are probably going to end up creating these challenges. So, you know, I was right. <laughs> and here we are in looking towards this year and kind of what I want to get out of it. Number one, I think it's going to take nearly the entire year to repair what happened in 2020 and I don't necessarily feel alone in that because I feel like a lot of people are kind of in the same boat for different reasons or for their own personal reasons uh, so that's comforting I guess the other thing that I just really took away from last year and that I really want to bring into this year was that I learned a lot about my trauma my childhood trauma in terms of like what that's done to me or like how that's changed me and my different behaviors or where to look. I've learned a lot about myself as it relates to that and how it relates to my different mental illnesses and how it relates to just so many different things about me. Um, I don't regret last year, no matter how much I might have screwed up um, and that's pending because things could technically, I don't see them getting this way, but technically they can get like a thousand times worse. Um, knock on wood. But I don't regret those things. I think that they were dumb decisions, and I now know they're dumb decisions. You know, people learn from their mistakes, um, and I'm learning the hard way. But it was kind of just like a release for me. And I don't exactly know what that looks like, or I mean, I don't exactly know what that means quite yet. Um, but I don't have regrets. Um, I have reflections, if that makes sense. But yeah, so I just wanted to hit y'all with at least a starter video for 2021, which I, I want to be a great year. Um, it's not just about recovery from 2020. It's about new beginnings, new starts. We're learning from our mistakes. And this year, we're not just doing whatever the hell we want to do. I'm done throwing this giant tantrum, or my inner child is done throwing this giant tantrum i think now it's time for me to nurture him and really focus on you know healing until the next video y'all deuces <laughs>